Hello. So we're still in the first phase of treating Hashimoto's. Uh, the, the person has been avoiding iodide and iodine. They are taking a thyroid prescription. Their TSH levels are coming down. Thyroid inflammation is being reduced. They're taking antioxidants to reduce that inflammation as well. Um, during this time, first phase, we want to provide all the nutrients the thyroid needs to make its thyroid hormones except for iodide. So that when we get into the second phase of reintroducing iodide, the thyroid is primed and ready to start producing its hormones once again. So that's the subject or the topic of this presentation. Priming of the thyroid uh, simply means that we're going to provide the thyroid cells with, with what they need to make thyroid hormones. And even though we're not uh, using iodide, we still want to prepare the thyroid to be ready to make uh, its hormones in the second phase. So the, <clears throat> th those nutrients are uh, iodide, of course, and selenium and zinc and iron. Those are all the nutrients the thyroid cells require to make thyroid hormones but we're taking out iodine in this first phase. And so the thing is that if there's no iodide, then the thyroid cannot make its hormones. Let's talk about these three important nutrients. Selenium is uh, required for a number of things, not only for making thyroid hormones, but for this conversion of the um, T4 to the T3, which is the activating thyroid hormone. Also, anyone taking Synthroid or a prescription that's only T4 also requires selenium to convert that Synthroid or the T4 into some T3. Zinc, also essential, I suggest the picolinate form between 25 and 50 milligrams. If you have the <coughs> indications of a zinc deficiency, which would be uh, those white spots on your nails, or colds that um, keep reoccurring or take a while to clear up or if you have um, if you find that you cut yourself and it takes a long time for that uh, wound to heal those are all indications of, um, of a zinc deficiency and you might want to be taking more like the 50 milligrams of picolinate. Iron is essential for many many things in the body um, but also required for the production of thyroid hormones um, but it's important to not take iron in supplement form unless you really need it. And the only way to know if your body needs it is not so much looking for iron deficiency anemia, but to do a blood test called ferritin. Ferritin is a, um, a lab test which indicates the amount of irons, iron that's stored in the body. It's a protein uh, carriers of iron. Um, and the, if, you, if you do have low ferritin, <clears throat> ideally it should be around 60, uh, but I've seen people down as low as 10. So if you're down that, say, 40 and below, you, it might be a good idea to be taking ferritin. It does not cause uh, the constipation and digestive problems other forms of iron have. So the only, only company I know of that, that makes it is called Cardiovascular Research, but there may be others that produce a product called ferritin. <clears throat> also, we want to prime or prepare thyroid, thyroid receptors um, during this first phase. And these are the receptors that are specific for binding onto the activating thyroid hormone T3. And these receptors are made uh, from a protein as well as vitamin D and vitamin A. <clears throat> so a deficiency of vitamin D or a deficiency of vitamin A is going to cause a lower population of these T3 nuclear receptors. There's also other nutrients which the thyroid requires uh, just for its uh, overall uh, tissue health um, and also to help reduce, uh, further reduce inflammation of the thyroid. Um, sometimes there is scarring or kind of a hardening of the thyroid gland which in this first phase we can, we can begin to address uh, by taking specific uh, nutrients. And these are primarily in the category of essential fatty acids. 
Um, one product which I like is called Mixed EFAs from Biotics Research. And the other essential fatty acid category would be the omega-3s, which are also in themselves um, anti-inflammatories. So again, the Mixed EFAs is by Biotics Research, and it has a combination of the oils or extracts from the walnut, the sesame seeds, hazelnuts, and also the apricot kernel. The omega-3s would, of course, include both EPA and DHA. And uh, there's many on the market, and I've been using Nordic Naturals for the last 25 years. They're a very reputable company, and um, I believe very conscientious with how they're producing their, their different extracts. So it, it just seems like common sense that um, if the body doesn't receive the nutrients it requires for maintaining health, for regeneration of tissues, uh, for uh, what's required to make the various hormones in the body, of course our health is not going to be optimal and of course there's going to be some symptoms produced. But seldom does our system, our medical system, look at or investigate uh, nutrient levels. We're, we're looking at symptoms primarily, trying to find a diagnosis and trying to find a pharmaceutical that would address the person's condition, but seldom do we think about nutrients. It's really a kind of a gray area of medicine presently, although it's obvious, it's common sense that we must provide those nutrients which the body needs. So next we're going to go on to a couple of other uh, hormones that are produced in the system which interplay, interact with thyroid hormones, progesterone and cortisol.